I don't have very much voice, uh, so because I've been preaching, so I'll try and be as clear as I can. We're told in Exodus chapter 12 that Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you according as he hath promised that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. Now on the night of the Passover, when Moses told the people from God to take a lamb, and with the blood of the lamb, they were to kill the lamb, they would put the blood of the lamb on their lintels and on the posts of their doors. And so that night, there was going to be a terrible destruction. All the death of the firstborn was going to take place. And this was really a judgment on the Egyptians, because you may remember that Pharaoh had put to death all the firstborn male children of the Israelites by drowning them in the Nile. And Moses actually had been preserved from being drowned. And so the night of the Lord's Passover, was that those people who had the blood of this Passover lamb over their lintels and on their doorposts, their houses would be protected. And the firstborn of those houses would be protected when the death angel passed over the houses. And so it was called the night of the Lord's Passover. And in the New Testament, we are told that the Lord Jesus Christ prepared to eat the Passover with his disciples. And at that Passover, he revealed to them that it was he that was the Passover lamb. And he said, when he gave them the cup to drink, the cup of wine, he said, take ye all of this, drink ye all of this, for this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And so the blood of the new covenant was the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for the forgiveness of sins. And that new covenant is what God spoke to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 31. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, saith the Lord, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Even though I was a husband to them, the Lord says, they broke that covenant. But this will be the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their hearts and their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. So going back to the Passover lamb, the blood of an animal could not forgive the sins of the people. So that blood of the Passover lamb in Egypt was pointing to Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who was going to take away the sin of the world by shedding his own blood. And that's why we remember at this time of the year, the Passover. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, when the Apostle Paul is instructing them about the Feast of Unleavened Bread, not to have any leaven in their feast, 
and leaven speaks of corruption. The leaven of the Pharisees was hypocrisy, it spreads. The leaven of Herod was wickedness. The leaven of malice and wickedness, we are told about, to put it all away from the feast of unleavened bread. And so the feast of unleavened bread actually spoke, and the Passover spoke of Christ being sacrificed for us. And so we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, I'll read it to you. This is what the Apostle Paul says, Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven or yeast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And so he said, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 7 and 8. So Christ is the protection over his people. The blood of Christ was shed, not in the Mass, not in the Roman Catholic Mass. That's a bloodless sacrifice. But the blood of Jesus Christ was shed once for the remission of sins, to cover our sins. And those who are under, those who have faith in his blood, those who are under the power of Christ's blood, have the forgiveness of their sins. And they will not be brought to mind. God says, their sins and their iniquities I will remember no more. And so where remission of these is, there is no more sacrifice for sins. That's why we don't need animal sacrifices, sacrifice of the mass, or any other sacrifice. And so Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Now in the, in the King James Bible, Sadly, the translators in the Acts of the Apostles translated it as Easter. And yet in other places was it where it's Pesach, they translate it Passover. In the Acts of the Apostles, it should be Passover. And so we don't go by the name Easter, we go by the name Passover. And Christ, our Passover, was made sin for us. He, he bore the curse of sin in his own body on the cross, on the tree, because cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. And he bore away the curse for all those who would put their faith in him and repent of their sins. And they have no fear of everlasting burning. They have no fear of outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. They have no fear of the eternal wrath of God to the praise of the glory of God's justice because they have believed on Christ and therefore they are trophies to the praise of the glory of God's grace. And this is Passover. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Not the blood of animals. The Jewish people, they'll be eating their Seder, they'll be having the cup of wine for Elijah, but it won't take away their sins. It's only Christ who can give you the assurance of sin forgiven, sin covered, and the assurance of heaven, everlasting blessing. In Jesus' name, I pray.